to supervise the egg laying of the ostriches. How many of you have been there to make sure that the snakes give birth? How many of you have been there to make sure that the tender plants grow? You're not there. He is there. That is why he's the most important person on earth. What? Jesus has come and has gone back to the Father. He's no longer here. He's here by his, by his Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is a Godhead here. The Father is in heaven. He's on the throne. He's here by his Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the extension of the Father and what? And the Son. That's why when you ask Jesus to come into your life, it's not a physical Jesus that comes in. It's the Holy Spirit of Jesus that comes into your life. So you see why he's so, so important. So you know, when you don't understand this, some people think the Holy Spirit is not an angel. The Bible calls him Jehovah Sabbath. He's the Lord over angels. He's the one that commands them. He's the one that supervises their function. And he can do that because he's everywhere at the same time. I think you should put whoever is writing, right? His ministries is not one, it's plural because there are many, and I don't know how much we can do, you know. Number five, the Holy Spirit has ministries in all creation and beyond creation, <laughs> he's the one supervising everything happening in the universe at the same time. When the Bible speaks of God, it says, In Him we live, in Him we move, and in Him we have what? Our King. So, the whole universe is in Him. And He is in the whole universe. I don't know, I can explain that, but. So he's still the one supervising the creation of the stars, the, the different planets. Every day the universe is expanded by millions and billions of stars and galaxies. So people even say that we don't just have to have multi passes, but all are in him. So he's an important person to know. I hear what I'm saying. boy of some preachers. You know, sometimes you can get, you can see some things that the Holy Spirit move. He's not your house boy. He moves because he chooses to move. He moves because that's what God wants to do. Not because you're commanding him. Because he's your creator. We studied it on Wednesday. The first person of the Godhead to be shown in creation was who? The Holy Spirit. Is somebody here now? So he has ministries in all creation and beyond creation. So what do I mean beyond creation? There are things. God created all things, but God himself was not what created. So in the Godhead, where is the circle of uncreated beings? He also has responsibilities. So that's why I say because all creation is in God. So beyond God, beyond creation, we find God. So he has roles in creation and beyond what? Creation. And what an awesome person. What an awesome person. If you have him as your friend, that's an awesome person to have friends with, to be friends with. I'm telling you, you know, some of us, you know, uh, uh, we don't understand who lives in us. We don't understand who's working with us. But I pray that before the end of the month, we'll have some degree of understanding. That we'll start an intimate relationship that will take you deeper in understanding in the name of Jesus. Because it's not possible for us to exhaust him and his ministries and his work. Even if we just focus on his ministries in our lives, we can't even exhaust him this morning. We have to go into it. So this note is not the note to miss church. I hear what I'm saying. You need to attend every service. You need to attend every meeting because some things will teach in services, some things will teach in meetings, some things will teach in retreats, some things will teach in evening in glory. And the, the wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit is that He's not just something to teach, He is a person to experience. Are you hear what I'm saying? 
and I'm trusting God that one way or the other, in the different services and in the different meetings, we will experience some dimensions of His personality, His power, His presence. Then in September, I'll take you to another dimension. I'll talk about the Holy Spirit made it twice in a year. In September, we will look at His gifts and His ministries in another dimension. So, so let's 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 introduce. So let's start with the person of the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? I love to start with a scripture, so let's go to Genesis chapter 1. We read it the other day, so let's look at it again. Because, so that you know that the things we are teaching is not guesswork. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. If you are with us on Wednesday, I told you the word here is Elohim. And the word there means the plural dimension of God. So when he's talking about God here, it means the Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Spirit. They created what? The heavens and the earth. The three of them were involved in creation. Three of them. But let's go to the next verse. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Can we read the next slide together? And, then who's projecting? and the Spirit of God, if you're projecting today, you have to be fast. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the first person of the Godhead, in verse 1, the three of them were introduced generally. But the first person that we will see this function in creation is who? Is who? He's called by many names, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, and maybe later we might, if we have time, we might look some other names. So when you see the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. When you see the Holy Ghost, it's the Holy Spirit. We, so we see him here moving over the face of the waters. to get up in explaining this verse, but it suffices to say that in Genesis chapter 1, when God created the heavens and the earth, everything was perfect. But between chapter 1 and chapter 2, there was a rebellion by Satan, who was Lucifer, who was the one that was managing this galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, which was one of the most precious galaxies to God. So when he rebelled, many of the angels that were working with him in this galaxy rebelled with him. Praise the Lord. They rebel with him. And because of that, the peoples, they were certain peoples that lived on the head at that time, called it the pre adamant trees. Because when you look at things like your dinosaurs and all those, they don't come from this stage. When you do your digging up, you see, you know, your Homo sapiens, your Homo habilis. Your Homo erectus, your Neanderthals, they tell you that they are your grandfather, they are not your grandfather. They live in an age before this time. Sometimes we don't teach of them. Some people call it the age of angels, where angels were the ones in charge of the whole galaxy. So when the devil, you know, rebelled, all the people rebelled with him. Or oh, I think most of them, and I was of them. God destroyed that earth. How did he destroy it? By flooding. There are about two things God did. One, he flooded the earth and he froze it. Then another thing, he switched off their sun. That's even the switching of the sun is what led to the freezing. And if you read, if you read a lot of history, if you're into paleontology, the study of dinosaurs and all that, you know, you will know that there were they tell you about a time when all vegetation died, and that was when most of the dinosaurs was died. That was when God switched off the sun. That's why if you read down in Genesis, you see God had to switch it on again. And I think that it was on the fourth day or so. Hello? Do I have scientists in the house? 
Am I speaking your language? So when you talk about the ice age, that's what brought about the ice age. That's why the Bible calls the face of the waters. The waters were frozen, so they had a face. And the Holy Spirit was moving over the face of the waters for two reasons. One, I showed you the Greek word, the Hebrew word there is Rashaf and Chaul. Rashaf means he was protecting that thing because even though the air had been destroyed, the basic foundation and the genetic composition, the DNA of the earth was still in place. They wanted to make sure that it was not polluted by Satan and his cobalt. That's why he was covering. And remember, I told you the whole universe is in him, so he can cover the whole earth by himself. So he was covering, and number two, he was putting over the face of the earth. All of the world moving means activating it, releasing power, preparing the earth to come alive again, preparing the earth for the word of the Father. So whenever you have a situation that is hopeless and useless, don't give up bringing the Holy Ghost. Someone say bringing the Holy Ghost. He has the ability to preserve that situation, to maintain it, to maintain the status quo. But he also has the ability to activate transformation and everybody say amen. amen. He has the ability to change that situation, to turn it around. Oh, whenever I see impossible healing cases, that's the specialty. Job 33 verse 4 says, The Spirit of the Lord has formed me. The breath of God has given me life. So whenever I sense in my spirit that maybe in this meeting, I'm going to have people that will deform limbs, shorten limbs, and all kinds of things, people that need creative miracles or restorative miracles. What I begin to do is begin to spend time waiting on Him, asking Him to have this way. Sometimes I spend time in worship creating that atmosphere for him to move. Because that earth was without form and for it was formless and empty. The Hebrew word is tohu babu. was formless and empty, shapeless. Nobody ever believed anything to come out of it. And when uh, uh, evolutionists tell you that uh, they, they think that they know what happened but they can't explain it properly. They tell you there was a big bang. Is it not? And then life sprang again. Oh, there was actually a big bang. What was the big bang? The booming voice of the Father. Let there be light. Boom! That was the booming voice of the Father. And because everything had been activated, just like when you have a room filled with gas, when you put a match, it explodes. So when the booming voice of the Father, the Bible says, even in that day, that the dead shall hear his voice, and the dead shall what? Shall rise. So all the plant forms, all the animal forms that have been suspended in ice, the ice tore immediately, and they came alive again. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was the big bang. Did you understand? That was the big bang. Because there is no way that the chaos can create a cosmos. Confusion cannot create order. Entropy can never create order. I mean, enjoying myself. I don't know. I hope some people are not lost. I think I should have a scientist conference one day. Let's talk Bible Scientology. Yeah. Because God is the greatest scientist. Do you know how to form order? He did it first. You are just discovering it. Oh, we have discovered oxygen. Discovered. Yes, it's actually a discovery. But you didn't create it. So, thank God for the person that discovered. What about the person that created it? Who is greater? Praise the Lord. I need to get out of this. I'm already in trouble. But whenever I bring him in, the Bible says mountains melt what in his presence. As I see breast not goods begin to disappear spontaneously. As 
start seeing bones moving, creaking, taking shape. A lady came to one of the meetings we had in Transcode Church. She had a hand that had been broken that was crooked. And I told them in that meeting, if you have anything crooked, just rub your hand to straighten out. She just rubbed her hand on the hand, the hand straightened out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because in His presence there is fullness of what? Francis Sonda talked about the time they was just joking and saying, if you have a crooked nose, just rub your hand. Like a guy who had fractured the nose, they just rub the hand and take straight out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In his presence, we've seen people that had fingers cut off, the fingers grew out. We've seen legs grow with ease. I remember one of the places I went to. I told the woman I noticed she was humbling. Let's pray for your leg. I didn't even say a word. Before I could even say a word, I just beckoned on the leg, the legs have been. Oh, that's the work of the Holy Ghost. Someone said that's the work of the Holy Ghost. When he's around, things are what is. So instead of spending time running up and down, spend time to invite him. Is somebody here now? Get him involved in your business. Get him involved in your family. Get him involved in your ministry. When he's not involved, you work very hard. And sometimes get nothing. But when he's involved, things are easy. All you need to do many times is just to say the word and it will be done. This month, you are going to have easy things. Amen. Oh, bless me so glory. This is another month of easy. I say you are going to have easy things, Amen. easy breakthroughs, Amen. easy miracles, Amen. easy open doors Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because the spirit is involved. So that's the first introduction. So he's the first introduction of God. The Spirit of the Lord moved over the face of the waters. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So he is full God. He's not half God. He's not quarter God. He's not an angel. He's full God. There are three persons in the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Spirit. I don't know those that are browsing. If you can help us get the apostle. There are two creeds I want you to get. And if you get it, just project it on the screen. You can see the Apostles' Creed and the same Creed. Two, two creeds. Because you see, when you're a Christian, you should know what we believe. You should know what we believe. It must be clear for you and clear to you. So, but let me continue if you can. If you guys get it, especially the Apostles' Creed, you can point it up. And there were things the Apostles believed. When they got baptized, they recited these things. As I smoke it, I went for baptism. You know, they taught you some of those stuff. Or confirmation. So who is the Holy Spirit? He's full God. He's the same essence with the Father. The Father is a spirit. The Son is a spirit. The Holy Spirit is a spirit. The only thing that when Jesus came and died for us, he took the form of man. He took flesh. Praise the Lord. But he's still what? Essentially what? He is one with the Father and the Son. There is perfect unity. He's the third person in that trinity and is one with them. The Bible speaks about it in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. I think verse 12 is that a tearful cord cannot be easily what? Broken. That is one tearful cord in the universe that cannot be broken. They are together. Number two, he is a person. He is a person. He has feelings. He sees. He hears. He speaks. Many times in the Bible you will see them say, the Holy Spirit said. Let's maybe now about the Holy Spirit said. When they came to that council in Jerusalem. When they were trying to sort out the issues about whether Gentiles should be circumcised and everything, what the apostles, when they finished the deliberation, they said, We and the Holy Spirit have what? Decided. So it's an intelligent being, it's not an inanimate being. So we and the Holy Spirit have decided. In Acts chapter 13, the Bible says that while the people were worshipping, 
and ministering to the Lord, he said, someone said he said, I told you he's the person of God on the earth now. Now, why we were in the church that was in Antioch, we were in church in Antioch, certain prophets and certain teachers, as Barnabas, as Simeon, that was called Niger, as Lucius of Simon and Manen, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrad, and so verse me. As they minister to the Lord, who are ministering to God and fasted, who said, who said, see him acting and moving like the wind. But it's not a wind. He's a person. Someone says he's a person. He's the person that moves the wind. He's the person that created the wind. I've shown us the part of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in creation. What is the part of the Father in creation? Whenever I see him, he's always speaking. What is the Son in creation? Whenever I see him, he's always walking. So if you didn't get that, I don't know. I don't know. I hope he got it. You see the Son, he's always preaching. He's called the Word of God, the doer, doing part of the Trinity. When you see the Holy Spirit, he's manifesting what has been what spoken. And I gave us a simple example using a, a, a building site. The Father is like the foreman giving directions do this, do this, do this. The Son is like the message doing the actual work. The Holy Spirit is the laborer that is supplying what the resources. Three of them work in perfect unity and what synergy. Is it clear now? Hello, are you still here? The Holy Spirit says, separate from me what Barnabas and Saul, whereunto I have for the work that I have what called them. Is somebody here now? Then verse 3. And when the people had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them what? Away. Can we read verse 4 together? One to go. Verse 4. So what? Being sent forth by who? By who? Holy Ghost. He is not an inanimate object. He's a person. They departed unto Seleucia and thence they sailed towards to sea. Sends them forth. That's why I told you he's the administrator of the church. He's the one that decides the things that are in the church. What should be done? Present is the one releasing people into ministry and following them up to fulfill their ministry. So it's not an inanimate being. Like I said in the Council of Jerusalem, Bible, the Holy Spirit is sent. That is why. You should not grieve what the Holy Spirit. The Bible says we can grieve Him. But the grief of the Holy Spirit with whom you have been what? You have been sealed for the day of what? Salvation. So you can grieve Him. He's a person. You can get Him angry. You can get Him very angry. The same Bible says, wait not the Spirit. So those who are going out of time, maybe a little bit made by one that I going on into the details. To quench not the Holy Spirit. So you can quench him. There are many believers in their life, they have quenched the Holy Spirit. They have silenced his voice, he doesn't speak to you. How do you quench it? By constant disobedience. Constant disobedience. Constant neglect. If you're on that place, any scripture I quote, you get it. the Spirit. Have you quenched him in your life? Is he still speaking? Do you still hear that voice? Do you still feel that leading? Are you now as on your brother? Which he was as on your sister. Because when you become as on your brother, you get there beginning in his sister. Crazy mistakes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Is somebody here now? So he sees, he speaks, he leads. Look at it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 
19. Quench not what? The Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. Quench not the Spirit. Is somebody here now? Tell your neighbor, quench not the Spirit. Ask him, is the Spirit still alive in you? Is he still speaking? The Bible says we should also grieve not the Spirit. Get him out. You can get him out. And when you get him out, he, he walks away, he backs out and allows you to do what you want to do. How can you get him out? By living in sin. By disobeying. By taking sides with the enemy. Is somebody here now? Tell anyone he's a person. Tell somebody he's a person. Got it. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. I think you should know this scripture is very important. Grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you are what? Sealed unto the day of redemption. So when you grieve him, he takes up the spirit. That's why it's called apostasy. The Bible also lets us know you can sin against the Holy Spirit. He says the sins, any sins against the Father, it was the way Jesus himself that was saying it. Sins against the Father will be forgiven. Sins against the Son will be forgiven. But a sin against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Why? He's the tender person in the Trinity. He's the most tender person. So you don't hurt him. If you hurt him, then you have touched the Father and the Son. And everybody say, Amen. Turn about quench not the spirit. Grieve not the spirit. Tell him again, sin not against the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Wow. So it's not a wind, it's not a fire, but it can manifest as fire. It's not a dove. Get the text which you sin not against the Holy Spirit. Jesus was the one talking about it. It's in the same of the His Holy Spirit shall be, shall not be forgiven. Now, and of course, I know some people are not saying, Have I sinned against the Holy Spirit? Yeah, many of you are not qualified for that. To so leave that. Still so recover from the one you sinned against your, your friend. Because for you to sin against the Holy Spirit means you have had an intimate walk with him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You have had an intimate walk with him. Then you walk to him. Hallelujah. He's not a dove. I know we sing this song. In the rainy baby, in the rainy baby. Yeah, that's the figurative step. It's not a dove. He created the dove. What time you calling him dove? <laughs> He's not a dove. It's not. He, the Bible says, I, I don't want to just go deep into that. The Bible says he descended on Jesus like what? Like the dove. A lot of people even argue that it wasn't a physical dove, but that he came gradually in the form of John the Baptist and others saw it. Maybe in the spirit, I don't know. Maybe physically, I don't know. But he descended in the form of a dove. On the day of Pentecost, he descended in the form of fire. But he's not what? That's just how he manifests. He manifests as a dove because the spirit of peace. His, that's the, second, the third scripture, Matthew chapter 12, verse 31. Wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and what? Blasphemy shall be what? Forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against what? 
the Holy Spirit shall not be what forgiving unto them. You blaspheme, you play with his name, you mess him up, you sin, especially when you have had a deep walk with him. Oh, you. In fact, before this one, before you even say that you have committed your judgment. But that's not my focus, okay? Let's focus on good things. Amen. Somebody say amen. Someone say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell anybody, but don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. It's very important. Hallelujah. Okay. It's not water. Though some of his functions can be entitled to water. It's not water. Tell anybody, it's not water. It cleanses, it regenerates, it brings back to life. But it's not water. Or it can manifest as water. It's not an anointing. It's not an anointing. He is the maker and the distributor of what? Tell anyone he's not an anointing. So you might not feel an anointing, but always be still. Hello? Is somebody here? For most times, it's in you before you feel you are anointed. Because the moment you say Jesus coming into my life, it's not the physical Jesus that comes into your life. Are you aware? It's the spirit of Jesus. Someone say the spirit of Jesus. Because if it's the physical Jesus, Pastor Saul will stand up. Are you born again? Has Jesus come into your life? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes. When was that? Okay. Jesus is in his life. You know how Jesus was? He was in Nazareth, about six foot four tall, with long beards. So, first, I'm looking for his head. He should be somewhere here. You can't see it. I'm looking for his beard. But he had long beards and long hair. Where is the hair now? I can see it. So he's the, praise the Lord. So it was not the physical Jesus that came. It's the spirit of Jesus. Someone say the spirit of Jesus. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. So he's the one that comes into you to regenerate that dead spirit and give it life again. Hallelujah. Okay. Could it be older than this? Is there any font or whatever you can use to make it older than this? You can actually make it older than scroll it. It's not power, but it is the dispenser of what? Is somebody here now? He is not what power. So sometimes when people say Holy Ghost move, what they are trying to ask is power move. He is the dispenser of power. If he gives you, you will have it. If he doesn't give you, you will not have it. And any day he decides to collect it, that's it. That's why you see some ministries that were bought some years ago. Now they are what? Because the owner of the power has what? They have switched it off. I never live in a place where you are sharing light. Somebody has a generator and you are, you are happy. They can wake up any time and put it off, is it not? Because you are about to watch Premier League. Light will go off. Yeah. The owner of the power has connected it. There are a lot of ministers going around but they are powerless because the owner has what? Switched off. Okay, so come down. Come down and start from the beginning. This is the Apostle's Creed. And I think everybody should know it. This is what the Apostles declared when they baptized people over the years. These are the things we believe as a Christian. Look at what does it say? I believe what? In God, the Father Almighty, creator of what? Heaven and earth. And I believe what? In Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by what? The power of the Holy Spirit. I see the three persons of the Godhead mentioned there. And was what? Born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified. He died and what? <laughs> Why? There are people that don't believe that Jesus died. For instance, in Islam, they preach that when Jesus was on the cross, God sent his angels to capture him from the cross and he was raptured straight into heaven. That he's coming back again to die properly. To coming back to marry and to die. So they have, they have a grave for him in the dinner. They are waiting for him. So when you say all oh, we are all one, all religion is the same, it's not true. But you see yourself. He was crucified, he died and was what? Some people don't believe he was crucified. They see that thing was just action. They were just acting. But he was actually what? Crucified. He actually what? Died. He was actually buried. See, he descended into what? Into hell. Jesus went to physically went to what? Hell. Because he was carrying our sins. He descended into hell. On the third day, I think there's something missing there. On the third day, I don't see this one is a bit modified, I don't know the source. On the third day, he goes from the dead. He what? Ascended into heaven. And is seated what? At the right hand of the Father Almighty. From where he shall come to judge what? The living and the dead. So Jesus is coming again. Tell everybody Jesus is coming again. These are the things we these are the apostles' creed. This is what we believe. Say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. Now, Catholic Church, not about this is the Holy Roman Catholic Church. Catholic means universal church. That's the church of God in the Holy Roman. There's Roman Catholic, there's Syrian Catholic, there's Iraqi Catholic, there's Russian Catholic. Are you aware? But the Roman Catholic Church was the diocese that was in Rome that ended up dominating most of the world. So that's why you say the Catholic Church, not about universal church put on earth and in heaven. I believe in the communion of the saints. What's he talking about communion? That there's still fellowship between the saints that have gone ahead of us and the ones that are worse that are here. You see it in the book of Hebrews chapter 12. It talks about the church of God that is being put on earth and what in heaven. I believe in the forgiveness of sins. I believe in the resurrection of the body. Now one day this body that is soul, because that's what, what we do better. What we say is that we are suing the body. I am not going to take that again. Oh no. Because she passed on again, but he will be it. Some of you should go to Hebrew church. There are some deep things for you. So when they bury people, what they say? They are planting you. That on the last day, what will happen to you? You will germinate with your resurrected body. And I believe in what? Life. Amen. Hallelujah. So you should get a copy of this thing. Some of you, I don't know that came from Orthodox churches, you've forgotten some of these things. This thing is important. Some of you that were well, born in Pentecostal, you never knew about this. You need to know what you want. Ask the neighbor, do you know what you believe? So if you look at this screen, it shows you that the apostles believe that the Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Spirit, and believe they were all what they were all God, and everybody said amen. amen. So let's move. He is that person of God that is deeper than your clothing. The Holy Spirit, that personality of God that is deeper than our clothing. He is God in us, living through us, counseling us, leading us daily to live our best life, which is the life God has planned for us. God that is closer than your clothing. You know, many times because we are, we are religious, when we pray, we look up. Sometimes you don't need to look up, you need to look down. God is in you. Tell your neighbor, God is in you. So, you know, some of the, for instance, some of the intercessory prayer we are praying, we are trying to clear the place of the power of the air to, so that your prayer will ascend. You don't even need that. Daniel did that because he was not born again. The Holy Spirit is inside this. God is in you. You don't need to look up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So some, there are some religious things people do when they finish praying. They say we cover our prayer with the blood of Jesus. 
Why? So that the devil will not collect it. You don't know God. God is in you. Tell me, but God is in you. This is internal messaging system. I, I, I hear what I'm saying. Some banks don't have internal mailing system. Is it external? It's internal mailing system. Hey, you have internal mailing system. God is inside you. I hear what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit is there to help you pray the prayer and facilitate the answer. He helps you to pray to the Father and you make sure the answer comes to you. So some of these are already just things we need to stop. Tell everybody they need to stop moving. Is God upon us, empowering us to touch and to change our world? Is God with us, surrounding us as a shield, protecting us from evil? He is God for us, fighting for us, working for us to facilitate all that we are working towards. So you should know there's God in you, He's there to direct you. You should know that there is God upon you. He comes upon you to empower you with the Spirit, with the power of God. You should know that there is God with you. But when I learned some of this, I stopped being afraid. I you hear what I'm saying. God is going with me. I can go through any road, any time. A campus of nice 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I'm going through bush parks. I'm not afraid because God is with me. Tell your neighbor, God is with me. Don't tell your neighbor, God is with me, oh. Tell, I'm not afraid. He said, if you go through the water, remember Isaiah 43, if you go through the water, I will what? Be with you. If you go through the fire, I will what? I will be with you. In Psalm 139, he said, even if you go into the darkest places, they will say, you are there. For even darkness is what? Light. When you understand the person that is in you, that is with you, you will not be afraid. No matter what you're going through life, God is with you and you will come through in the name of Jesus. I say you will come through in the name of Jesus. He is our friend. That friend that is always there. He is that friend that sticketh closer. You know there's a scripture that says there is a friend that what? Sticketh what? Closer than a brother. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. Someone say the Holy Spirit. Someone say the Holy Spirit. It's the friend that is closer to you than the brother. The brother can be by your side, but he is in you. He can read your thoughts. He can feed your heart. He can direct you internally. Is somebody here? Hallelujah. Is somebody here? I've known him since 1994 as a friend, and he has never let me alone. He has never abandoned me. He's been there with me through Tika Pay. I've gone through many dark nights. So. This is a song, I don't know what I think. I'm not trying to remember the, 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 the name. The A to through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in him. Do you know the song? Do you know the song? Who knows the song? Through it all. I've learned to depend upon his words. I'm trying to remember the stats. But it talks about I've been through many sorrows, I've gone through many problems. But through it all, it's been there. It's a secret why I'm always strong. Sometimes my wife asks me, You're so calm with all the things happening. I have internal control. Are, are you hearing me? I have internal what? Control. I have a thermostat inside. It's called what? The Holy Ghost. I have inside knowledge of every problem because the one inside me knows the end from the beginning uh, so when everything is breaking loose all chaos are going to say calm down that's not the end 
the end will be glorious. And the Bible says, better is the end of a thing than what? I don't know who is going through hell. The Bible says you are going through, you are not going to stop there. I, I hear what I'm saying. I think Brother Pelody was one that said this. If you catch hell, don't hold it. If you are going through hell, don't stop. I don't know what people will see nowadays. Though. He said, if you catch hell, oh, I'm experiencing hell. Just don't hold it. Leave it. Let it go. If you are going through hell, what? He did not say, I'm sitting in hell. He did not say, I'm building a house in hell. He said, I'm going through hell. That means you are going through. Someone said, I'm going through. Someone said, I'm, I'm, I'll soon be out of this. Oh, you are finding it difficult to pay your rent. It's just a phase. Is somebody hearing me here? You're going through. Someone said, I'm going through this. You might have a sickness in your body. Don't see that sickness as an end. See it as a tunnel that you are what? Going through and that there is light at the end of what? The tunnel. If God could make something out of the earth that was without form and void, He can make something out of your situation. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So He has guided me through many truth thick and thin. He has guided me through many dark nights and dark seasons and lonely nights. He's a friend that I want you to know. You know, in 1993, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I began to speak in tongues. It was wonderful. I could pray better. But there was still something missing. I was born again in 1988. By 1999 or so, I started walking away. You know. By, by 1988, by 1989, by year 1990, I already started shaking. By 1991, I really dedicated my life afresh to Christ in a church, in Crusade, in Anglican Church, All Saints Church, that was um, presided over by then the Reverend Okoronja, who is now the bishop. So by my years to I got filled with the Holy Spirit. That was 1992-93. I began to speak in tongues. I began to pray more. I began to preach with more boldness. But in 1994, I watched a particular message by Benny Hinn. The title of that message there was Works of the Holy Spirit. And he began to talk about his personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. That he was his friend. He talked to him. He got instructions. He got counsels. And the Holy Spirit helped him to study the Bible, explain the Bible to me, simplify things to me, helped him to worship the Father. And when that relationship started, unconsciously he started carrying the power of God. And I worked an interview with his brother William some years ago. You see, both of them shared the same room, they shared the same thing, but sometimes William could not enter the room because. If Benny comes in first and he starts worshiping and everything, a light floods the room. And when William looks through the door and sees that light, he's afraid to enter the room. He does look for where else to sleep. Benny said, when he started going out, he didn't know him. He said, some of us are struggling to be anointed. We don't need to struggle. Just fellowship with the carrier of the anointing. Is somebody hearing me? It will rub off on you like what? The Holy Spirit is the activator of the glory. What is the glory of God? It's just the perfume of God. Have you ever passed somebody that wears very strong cologne? Mm. You know, you know, you know, cologne. There's perf. <laughs> then there's perfume. Then there's cologne. If you know, you know. What is pet? After spring, before you get to that dog, you are looking for it. That's pet. That's pet. Pet means it can fly. There's perfume. It can stay in the building. But it's cologne. Once you enter the building, everybody knows. Is somebody hearing you? When you are full of the Holy Ghost, when you have spent time with Him in worship, in prayer, the cologne of the Spirit. That is what is called a kabod. The weighty presence of God surrounds you. You don't need to announce it. 
when you come in, people will feel it. Please imagine that when Kajibuma entered the building, a cloud enveloped the building. She carried a cloud where she went. People can look from outside and say Kajibuma is in this building because they will see a physical cloud covering the building. There was a place she went to minister, and because of security, she had to be passing through the kitchen because people have blocked all the entrances. So the cooks in the kitchen say, Ah, she's going to pass through the kitchen. Ah, we will see her in Britain. But they never got to Britain those three days because as she comes in, that presence goes ahead of her, knocks everybody down, and she just passes. And that's the meeting. When she's coming out, they did the same thing, knocks everybody down, and she passes. That one is personal security. It's called PX. Don't give God. Pastor David said, whenever he's traveling, this is the prayer he prays. Lord, offer me in your glory to our And he tells him, oh, people, you are not securing me, I am securing you. Offer me in your glory to One time I had an accident. It was 57, 2057. He said, he didn't know how he ejected from the car. He just saw himself here and saw the car there. He was Somebody say, cover me with your glory. Oh, yes, so what the Lord said, how does he start in the day? He wakes up and he said, Good morning, Holy Spirit. If you know he's a friend and he's with you and he's in you, he's around you. What do you do? Acknowledge him. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Come and go with me today. Come and order my steps. Come and direct me. Then he starts in the church and says, Come and help me to worship the Father. Nobody knows how to worship the Father like the Holy Ghost. That's why it's not good to be too, too rigid, too rigid in your prayer life. Some of us have a formula or time table. We must start with praise, two minutes. Worship, three minutes. Prayer, five minutes. Bible reading, three minutes. No, for me, I don't know about it. Sometimes it turns it upside down. I wake up and the first thing is go and read the scripture. Sometimes I wake up and I just feel like worship. Sometimes I come out of the sleep praying in God. If it's a relationship, it will not be rigid. I hear what I'm saying. You need to tell your neighbor you need to have a relationship with God. Tell your neighbor God lives in you. And you need to have a relationship with Him. So let Him direct you. The Bible says He will guide us into the way of what? Oh, don't miss what this is. It's going to be exclusive because we're going to begin to open up a dimension of the ministry, the personal ministry of the Holy Ghost in the life of the people. So, when you are praying, ask Him to lead you. When you are finished with praying, ask Him to help you to plan the day. I've checked some things. Any day I don't have a good devotion, is a day I don't have a good plan. But if I spend time with Him, my, my, my plan is full. And most of those things are right for our children. Do I have a witness in the house? Yes, sir. But beyond that, don't just spend time with me because they walk out without him. No. He is your friend. He is your companion. He is your senior partner. That's what your Cho calls him. He said, we're in a business. You know, in a business, you're in a law firm, they have partners, is it not? They have what? A senior partner. Who has more states and maybe is the owner of the chambers and a junior what partner? It's also that in accounting firms. It's also that even in businesses, there are major shareholders and there are what ordinary shareholders. He is the senior what? How dare you go into the day without the senior partner? There is the, the communion of the Holy Spirit. That's what you do in the process. There is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? As you go into the day, acknowledge His presence. Talk with Him. Discuss with Him. When you have a problem, tell Him. When you want to make a decision, ask for His consent. Proverbs chapter 3, think verse 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all thy ways, what? Acknowledge Him. And He shall, what? Direct your heart. Why are you making mistakes? You are not acknowledging Him. The truth is, you are acknowledging there are some places you will not go to because he will not go there. 
Make up your mind never to go anywhere the Holy Spirit does not go. Anywhere you want to go, you don't feel the Spirit going with you. You don't feel like you find restriction. Don't go there. When Christians tell me they go to night nice club, how do they survive there? I'll never be there unless I'm in a special mission to reach out to somebody for Christ. Send my God. Because He won't go there with you. How do Christians survive where there's gossip? I don't know how you survive. Because if you are really sensitive, once you start that thing, you will sensibly leave. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes, How do Christians stay where they are talking against people? Or stay where they are talking against their pastor? I don't know about you. Whenever I start discussing with you and you start talking against our pastor or you start or he leaves. And I have to stop that discussion. Because I don't want to leave without him. Oh, I don't know about you. He's the key to fulfillment. If you move with him, you will always be fulfilled. But if you live without him, you will never be fulfilled. You can walk hard, but you may be going in the wrong direction. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? And there is participation with the Holy Spirit. That's why it's called partnership with the Holy Spirit. When you want to do anything, say, Lord, let's go together. Like I said this morning, Lord, let's go together. Let's go to preach together. You are the doctor, you are seeing a patient. Oh Lord, help me now. You are entering a surgery. Lord, help me now. I seem to direct you. Why do Christians make this mistake in business? They are not asking, they don't ask for the help of the Holy Spirit. He knows all things. He knows the business that is what genuine and the one that is what is fake. If you move with him, you will never make a mistake. Is somebody hearing me now? So, especially now that we begin to get into the last days and the days grow dark, you need to partner with the Holy Spirit. Someone say partner with the Holy Spirit. There's a book by Brother Lawrence, that's not the in his presence. Brother Lawrence talks about that everywhere he was, he was not a full time pastor, but everywhere he went, he acknowledged him. When it's time to eat, he said, Let's eat. When it's time to walk, he said, Let's walk. When it's time to go home, he said, Let's go home together. Then when you go home, have time to go back and say, Thank you for being with me today. Close your day with gratitude. And say, Lord, as I sleep. Oh, I love the old prayer. They will say, As I sleep, protect me, shield me, give me revelation dreams. Not all those Hawaii dreams. I'm dreaming of where you are fetching water. I'm dreaming all kinds of business dreams. When my spirit is chasing you, the Lord is chasing you. Just will come very tired. But they are revelating and refreshing dreams. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I love the prayer of St. Patrick. And I think, yes, I think Browse is a wisdom. He said, God upon me to direct me. God before me to lead me. God beside me to shield me. God within me to keep me. So, so he said, you cannot have me. God is above me. God is around me. And God is also what? That's the man that has a personal work with God. That is why the, the king of Ireland, they couldn't do anything to him. They would try to capture him. He would pick it early. Sometimes he would even transform. They, 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 there are so many stories. Him and his followers can transform into trees and you will not see them. And the soldiers will pass. Because the one inside you created all things. Oh. Is it when you watch all those cartoons? They are just perverting some truth. They bend them. They can only to drive or only to. No, the Holy Ghost is inside you. You are higher than Ben 10. Is somebody here now? I watched one movie. They were chasing them. They just, they just told me, I told my staff, and all of them turned into books. And we're just playing around, and the people passed, and they turned out and put them When they took one of the disciples, they set fire. They said, Today, we will know which God is God. They said, We're going to fight because those people worship fire. They say we're going to fire the chief of the dreams. He said, I'm going to fire with anyone that comes out. Patrick said, Really? Fire? Okay. But he said, if I go in, you say because I'm a good magician. He called the youngest believer that just gave his life to Christ. He said, My dear, you are the one that will go into the fire and come out. Little boy. That boy later became the bishop of Ireland. 
Then he said, okay, just give the boy confidence to remove his, his coat and put it on the board. I said, go, we go with you. But after a while, I said, no. No, they would think the power is in the coat. He collected the coat, gave the head of the priest, the dreams. They collected his own coat and put on the board. Because the real preserver is inside. <laughs> so both of them walked into the fire. Fire. Real fire. And after one or two minutes, the boy walked out. The only thing that happened was that the man's cloak was born in dishes. But the boy was not even smelling of ashes. He was not smelling of smoke. And they were waiting for the dream to come out. The guy will be born. He has been born like a suit. And after some time, when people be waited for him, the dream said, It's like your guy has gone up, but I like that suit. I need to collect it. He went into the fire and collected it. The kind of God that is Are you going to heaven? Will you be in heaven with men like this? Will you be in heaven with men like this? When you divide, collect the issue that came out, you won't be proud. And say, that's the God. That's why till today, Patrick is a petrol saint of Ireland. Till today, they worship God in Ireland. And from the time Patrick set his foot on Ireland, all the snakes left the island. Till today, go and gobble it in your, in your gobble. The place on earth where there is no snake, Ireland. Till today. Tell your neighbor, I'm carrying something great on the inside of me. Say, God lives in me. If you are born again, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And He's there to guide you. He's there to lead you. He's there to direct you. He's there to instruct you. On Wednesday, I'm going to be open to us. in different ways He leads us and He helps us. He's ministries in the lives of a believer. Don't miss that service. And everybody say amen. So it starts today. Ask him to be your friend. When you wake up in the morning, greet him. Ask him to help you to study. Ask him to lead you into the day. When you are going to bed, ask him to shield you. When you start that relationship, you begin to hear his voice. And remember, in that 1994, when I wake up the next morning, I say, Good morning, Holy Spirit. I hear in my spirit, Good morning. That started this relationship. That has brought me this far. Oh, Pastor is wonderful. Pastor is powerful. So there is wise. No, it's just because of the person on the inside. And guess what? He's also inside you. But you need to activate the friendship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you know how to speak in tongues. You have activated the tongues dimension, but you have not activated the fellowship dimension. Is somebody hearing me now? Yes. And if you're not born again, you don't know him. Because he is inviting him into your life that gets you saved. He's the one that changes your heart. He's the one that changes. His job is regeneration. Ask him to come into your life today. And your life will never be the same again. And everybody say amen. amen. Are you blessed today? Yes. Can you put your hands together for the Lord? Just give him some praise. Stand in your face. Let's pray. Time is out. I think you guys can post, post these things on our church page, on our WhatsApp page, please. The Apostles' Creed and the Saint Creed and the prayer of Saint Patrick. I think I love this. Said, As I rise today, may the strength of God pilot me. May the power of God uphold me. May the wisdom of God guide me. May the eye of God look before me. And the ear of God hear me. The word of God speak for me. May the hand of God protect me. And the way of God be before me. And the shield of God defend me. And the Lord of God and save me. May Christ shield me today. Christ with me. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Christ in me. Christ beneath me. Christ above me. Christ on my right. Christ on my left. Christ when I lie down. Christ when I sit. Christ when I stand, Christ in the hearts of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ 
in every eye that sees me, oh glory to God, Christ, in every ear that hears me, amen. That is the prayer of St. Patrick, a man that knew God. May this be your own prayer in the name of Jesus. Just talk to the Lord. Thank you for the word you've heard today. Tell the Holy Spirit, I'm sorry for neglecting you. From today, come and be my friend. Come and have your way. Come and direct me. Come and order my steps. Come and lead me. Tell him, I will no longer go out without you. And when I come in, I will acknowledge you. Before I go to bed, I will acknowledge you. And when I rise up, I will acknowledge you. And as you pray that prayer today, may God take you into a deep, glorious relationship with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. If you are not born again here, you won't make Jesus Lord of your life. You just lift up your hands. I want to lead you to Jesus. Jesus is the one that introduces you to the Holy Spirit. Just raise your hand. I want to lead you to Jesus. Maybe you're watching online. You don't know Jesus as your Lord. Pray this prayer with me. And you say, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Wash away all my sins. Transform my heart. Make me your son. I believe you died for me. I believe you are raised for me. Today I declare that you are my Lord, you are my Savior, and I will live for you every day of my life. And you say, thank you Holy Spirit for coming into my heart. Now lead me today, and lead me always. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? Just give him praise. Your life is going to change from this moment. Because you are going to acknowledge a new partner in the name of Jesus. And as you acknowledge that senior partner, your life and your ministry and your career will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Just take out your offerings. Let's thank God. Wow. I just feel His presence already. When you talk about Him, He comes. Can you say, Father, thank you for the privilege to give. As I give today, I receive your blessings. Good measure, press down, shake it together and run it over. In Jesus' mighty name.